Hello, welcome back to my allotment on this rather cold and foggy day. It's actually only one degree C today, so I'm all wrapped up. I think a few places in the UK actually had some snow last night. Nottingham might be forecast some for this evening or going into uh, the early hours of the morning. So that'd be quite exciting if we get some snow. Um, but today I thought we'll do a little bit of a 2020 allotment review. I know a few other allotment here um, YouTubers do this and I've never done it before but I think it's going to be a great way to sort of capture in one video the progress of the entire plot this year, see what crops grew well, what perhaps didn't work quite as well and um, yeah just sort of recap everything that we've done this year and then in future years we can look back and for next year I can make some changes to make it even better. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a plot tour format. We're going to go around the allotment but I'll put in lots of footage from earlier on in the year in the summer months when all of the crops and flowers were looking at their best and um, yeah we'll go along the crops see how they did and talk about all the new features that we've put in place this year and just have a little recap and review of 2020. At the end of the video I'll also summarise my best crop, worst crop, best moment and my best new tool for this year as well. So um, let's have a little look round and discuss all the things that we've done this year. Below my bird feeding station is where I grew all of my leeks. I sowed the seeds in April time, planted them out at around June. I multi-sowed them in small clumps. I followed the Charles Dowding method. The variety, I think it was called Winter Blue. It was one I hadn't grown before. It was from Johnson Seeds. And as you know from recent tours, the leek harvest wasn't great this year because they succumbed to rust and also the allium leaf miner. And I think for next year, if I'm growing leeks again, I definitely need to cover them up with a mesh to protect them from that allium leaf miner because it's going to be a problem um, no matter where I grow them on my allotment. So overall, this crop was probably one of my worst for the year, so I'd give it about a 3 out of 10. These are my strawberry beds. I have three altogether. Two of them are these that are in the cages to protect them from being eaten by the birds and the rodents. And the third one is in that corner over there, currently unprotected because I haven't had chance to build a frame for them yet. But my strawberries was a fantastic cropping fruit this year. It was such a good year for my strawberries. Um, but I did find that the crop over on this side, the berries were much smaller. And the reason for that is because I haven't actually thinned out the plants. So when they send off the runners, they grow quite closely together if you don't move them out and separate them. Um, so I got a lot of fruit from that patch, but they're all quite small. So, so for next year, I need to thin out those plants, give them the space that they need, about six to eight inches between each plant so that the fruits will then be bigger. Um, but I harvested about four kilograms, I think it was, from all of these patches um, for, the, for the year. And I think it was one of my most liked photos on Instagram, actually. Um, me holding all my strawberries because it was just such a great harvest. Made lots of jam. Yeah, really good year for the strawberries. In this little block here, I actually crammed in 16 sweet corn plants and sweet corn's a crop that I don't actually grow every year because I've had varying levels of success. But this year I grew a variety called a maize and it was brilliant. And the reason that I'm just so thrilled is because in previous years I've had rodents, probably rats or squirrels, come and actually steal the cobs just as they ripened and I was really paranoid that it was going to happen again this year um, but it didn't and I harvested so many cobs and they weren't a super sweet variety they were sweet but they weren't you know super sweet um, but they tasted really good you know eaten straight away and it's one of my favorite crops that I've grown this year because I had such a surprising success um, and there's pretty much very little maintenance involved I just put them in planted them out in late May I think and um, let them do their thing and I did plant in between them some sorry <laughs> the birds are distracting me um, some dwarf flowering cosmos which was a mistake they were actually supposed to be a taller variety of cosmos and so they've created a nice little meadow effect in between all the plants 
but they were really short so you couldn't really see the flowers very well so that's something I'd change for next year I'd still interplant it perhaps with cosmos but make it a taller variety I think next year if I don't grow a maize again if that's not the secret to preventing the rats perhaps it's because it's not a super sweet that they didn't sort of sniff it out and think it was as appealing I don't know I might try risking a really sweet variety um, if you've got any varieties to recommend please let me know in the comments I'm definitely going to grow sweet corn again next year based on the success of this year's harvest um, I definitely give them an 8 out of 10 the rhubarb, to be honest, was just like any other year. It produced a real bountiful harvest of thick, chunky leaves. And still got lots of that actually in the freezer to make some crumbles with. Um, it didn't seem to struggle too much despite the quite hot and dry spring that we had. So rhubarb, you know, never fails me. I'm down now at the apple tree and we believe this is a type of cox. I don't actually have the full identification of the tree yet but we think it might be the Ribston Pippin which is part of the Cox family I believe and as for my apple tree well it's been an okay year I wouldn't see say it's been the best or the worst but we did have quite a bit of troublesome weather in springtime for most of the fruit plants because to start with we had um, that really hot dry sort of spring I think it was around um, was it May time, March, April time, just as we were going, going going into the lockdown. And I think my tree suffered a little bit with um, like an apple mildew. It had this grey sort of mould on a few of the leaves. It's in my video, if you remember. Um, I picked them off and took them away to try and prevent it spreading. Um, but it doesn't seem to have affected the tree or the harvest. It's still in very good health. In fact, it's due for its winter prune in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, I had a good harvest. Um, unfortunately, one of um, the downsides of harvesting your apples is using them. And this, the tree that I have, the variety, doesn't store for very long. I have, must use them within about a month to two months is pushing it. Um, so I did actually, unfortunately, waste quite a few of the apples hand on heart you know it's easily done um it's the time of the year when all of the food is coming in at once the last of the tomatoes all of the chilies so many crops you have to deal with and i think it's one of the key things that you sort of learn as you go along the years is how to manage your food and process it and and preserve it because that's something that you don't quite realize that you have to learn as you go along but um I think next time whatever's left I'm just going to juice and freeze because it makes the most amazingly sweet juice um, and I didn't do that this year I really regret it I still did use quite a lot I've still got some in the freezer but unfortunately some of them went off before I had chance to use them oh and one other thing that's worth mentioning is this year I did have some codling moth damage and the caterpillar kind of buries into the um, apples and leaves like a black circle blemish on the outside and I had quite a bit of that this year and I haven't had as much of that in previous years I'm wondering maybe it's because of the milder winters that we're having it's not killing off as many of these pests um, next year I could set up a pheromone trap um, which will trap some of those moths the adult male moths I believe I haven't used one before um, but it isn't a 100% effective way of um, reducing the damage. It only helps prevent it or tells you whether those moths are actually visiting. It's more like a monitor activity than a preventative um, treatment. But I might give that a go. Uh, we've got lots of buds on these little spurs appearing already for next year. Uh, so it's going to be hopefully another good year. I'll try and do a separate video when I prune my apple tree if that's something that you're interested in um, Let me know Behind me we've got my raspberry canes that did pretty well this year. I think um, I always prefer growing autumn to summer fruiters I find they're so much bigger and juicier and they haven't got a battle with the heat of the summer weather And they love it down there. They have spread a little bit um, you know they're going to sucker from their roots um, but I just tend to pull those up as and when wherever I don't want them um, yeah my varieties are Joan Jay and all gold 
I seem to have much more of the Joan Jay than the all gold. I think that's kind of been outcompeted now by Joan Jay, which I don't mind because Joan Jay is my favourite. But yeah, in terms of croppage, um, it wasn't too heavy. Probably give it out of 10, um, maybe a 7. And my apple tree, probably a 7 as well. My wildlife corner is one of my favourite spots on the allotment, and especially for watching it change seasonally. I absolutely love it in April, May time when all of the forget-me-not is all spread around here and the bulbs are just starting to appear. Then we go into the summer months and in that transition we have the lupins and the foxgloves. Uh, before I put some dahlias in here for the first time, the single flowering ones in some the tall terracotta containers that seem to work really well. Um, but things I'm doing differently for next year, I've got lots of alliums planted and hopefully that will help with the transition from spring to summer because I did find there weren't too many flowers um, in that sort of transitional period. So hopefully as the foxgloves and the lupins are starting to die down, we'll still have some alliums in bloom. Fingers crossed. Um, I haven't really grown them en masse before, but this is all packed out now and we're going to have lots of big purple balls blooming for the pollinators it's gonna be amazing i really can't wait for those this really is one of my favorite areas and it's still you know it's continually developing it's only about two years old it was in 2018 that i transformed this bit from the waste that it was before um, and yeah so i'm always learning playing with plants and planting arrangements which is quite fun um, but yeah my main priority is to make it beneficial for the wildlife so you know, we've got that huge holly bush at the back there that's absolutely covered in berries and before that flowers. So those those berries are now feeding all of the birds and providing um, evergreen shelter for them and nesting places as well. Um, yeah, it's a really successful tiny little area for the wildlife that benefits me just as much as them. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops next year with those alliums and new planting arrangements that I might try. You might already be quite tired of me talking about these straw flowers because I go on about them at such length because they are, they just tick so many boxes. You know, they look great when they're growing on the allotment. You can cut them, dry them, make decorations with them. And the pollinators absolutely love them. And they're still blooming now. And this bed has actually been a brand new bed this year. I built it in spring during the lockdown using recycled um, wood and some soil that I managed to get hold of and um, it's just been such an amazing use of space I've had so many flowers from them and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to grow straw flowers in this patch again next year because I like to mix things up but I it will still be floral I think because I like to grow flowers next to the shed but as a cut flower it's got to be a 10 out of 10 because it just ticks so many boxes and um, I think everyone should be growing them on their allotment or in their gardens especially as our climate is getting warmer. These are a very drought resistant flower to grow because they're native to places like Australia and they've just, they're just so low maintenance. You know, I, as soon as I planted them out, I've barely had to do anything to them other than try and support them from the strong winds that we have. And that's about it. So yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 flower to grow is the straw flower for me. First off, please forgive the rubbish at the back there. I'll be working behind the shed on that hedge in the next few days, which is why I've got all that mess at the side. But this here is my brand new salad bed for this year. Again, like the straw flower bed, I built it during the lockdown um, with some recycled planks of wood that I've got and made use of whatever soil, uh, leaf mould and compost that I could get my hands on. And it's been a really, really good um, use of space. The reason I made it my salad bed is because it doesn't get that much sun compared to the top of my plot. There's a big tree here in the corner which shades it off for most of the day. But what I did grow were my lettuce, some beetroot, this chard, and also some spinach. I had a go at dry trying some beans at the back, but they didn't work, which I didn't think they would, but it was worth a shot. <laughs> um, but as for the beetroot, I mean, <clears throat> I harvested some really great big beetroot from here and the lettuce, I just kept picking and picking and picking. So this is definitely gonna stay a salad bed for next year. I'm hoping to get more sunlight down at this end with that tree 
becoming um, a lot more reduced hopefully in the next few weeks but yeah I think it's just been an excellent use of space you know you've got to grow what will grow in that area so I know not to grow any sun loving crops because they just won't perform well but shade loving crops you know they all did really really well and it's been one of my best years for beetroot actually and um, I got a couple of sowings in and just lots and lots of crops so yeah I'm really pleased with my new bed this year it's been such a fantastic little project this one um, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 as a as a whole bed because it's just been so much more productive than I could have imagined this trellis panel has been a brand new project for 2020 as well and the reason that I put it in place is because I wanted to try and create a screen uh, for the composting area behind and it may not work quite as well in the winter months because a lot of the foliage has died off but it's been a really cheap project it only cost me about 40 pounds and that was for the wooden posts and the um the spikes that go into the ground to fix them otherwise it was free the fencing is actually a piece that's usually used for council fencing uh, i managed to get hold of that for free and up it we've got a climbing rose in the bottom corner we've got the clematis which oh my god do you remember those blooms bright magenta and they bloomed for months on end quite late flowering from sort of summer july to september october we might have had a few more still hanging on and that looked amazing next to it we had the honeysuckle also blooming in a magenta pink and the smell of that honeysuckle on a summer evening was just divine <laughs> i've put in a jasmine as well which might be risking the spacing a little bit but i don't think it's going to be bright enough down here for the jasmine because they prefer full sun and it does get part shade in the afternoon down here um, but you know it, this is still a working progress we might switch up some of the plants if they don't do too well but the clematis and that honeysuckle in summer look amazing it would be nice to have more of an evergreen cover for the winter months like now but we do have the winter flowering clematis still to bloom right in that back corner and you guys know how excited i am for those those bells to open we've still got full buds they haven't opened yet but fingers crossed in the next few weeks or next month uh, we'll have those blooms open as well so we're creating more interest for the um, pollinators in the winter in case we get any bees coming and uh, extending that flowering season i've also had a lot of fun with the planting underneath here as well um, i've used some of those big sandstone rocks that i use for my borders at the top we've also got some uh, geraniums some hardy geraniums some hostas uh, that really really soft foliage that's called lamb's ear and um, yeah it's been really fun to play with this little section and I think it's um, going to be a great project to watch develop see how those climbers gradually take over <laughs> this um, trellis and cover it up uh, I'm still not sure maybe I should spray paint the metal to make it blend in a bit more give it more of a green finish I'm not sure um, but yeah it's been a great project to do here we have my carrot bed and that's done pretty well this year um, i think one thing i need to change next year is to improve the netting i need to get some hoops to make it more of a substantial solid kind of um, frame it's a little bit haphazard at the minute just clipped on um, but the carrots i grew were two sort of dwarf varieties called nanti and the shante variety both of which i sowed in spring we've got four rows in here so i really did cram them in i don't think i thinned them out as much as i should have so we do have some that are still quite small and another thing that i regret is not sowing an autumn cropping variety my intention was to harvest them all and then re-sow them in sort of early summer to get my autumn crop but i didn't do that so i don't have any of the really big sort of autumn king varieties so i think next year I'll grow two rows of the short quick cropping variety and then another two rows of an autumn one so that I get um, a longer season and some bigger carrots for winter. I have noticed that um, due to this flimsy um, cover I think a rodent has actually been in and um, sniffing out some of them carrots and possibly eating them haven't had a good look yet 
but yeah, I definitely need to improve this cover for next year. This is to ward off the carrot fly, which it does. I haven't had any carrot fly damage this year um, and last year since I started using the mesh and I also treated the soil last year with uh, nematodes as well. So if you want to get rid of carrot fly, you want the nematodes treatment and also use the really fine netting I've had a lot of carrots, they've just not been as big as I'd hoped because of the varieties that I chose. So I give them a 7 out of 10, but in terms of flavour, um, they're still a good 10 out of 10. You can't beat your fresh homegrown carrot. In this bed here, um, beside me here, we had my two rows of potatoes in containers. I grow them in tubs now and they're about 20 to 25 litre in size and it's been one of my best years for potatoes. I had such an amazing harvest, particularly from the cara. They were huge. Can you remember in my September harvest video when I tipped them all out? I was blown away by the size of some of those and um, the charlottes, they tasted amazing. Um, yeah, it's been a fantastic year for my potatoes. I think because um, I managed to keep up on the watering and then summertime, early summer, was still quite wet. Um, we didn't have too hot of a dry summer this year. So I helped that, think that really helped for the tubers to form. Didn't get blight and um, yeah, it's just been a great year for my potatoes. And then beside that we had two courgette plants they're a little bit slow to get going. I think after I planted them out in June, the temperature suddenly dipped and I didn't sort of cover them up or sort of um, acclimatize them to the outside before taking them out into the polytunnel. So I think they took a little bit of a shock, which is why they were a bit slow to sort of um, get growing again and get their roots down into the ground. I think next year I might think about setting up a um, cold frame <laughs> because that's going to be a great way to harden off my plants before I put them in the ground so there's less of that shock and less of that time to transition so that you start cropping your food um, a lot faster. Um, courgettes has been a great year for them um, other than the slow start we still had lots of courgettes um, two plants was definitely enough you never need to grow more than two unless you're a very large family um, I could have got away with just the one plant to be honest but um, yeah it's been a great year for this bed potatoes have got to be a 10 out of 10 and the courgettes I'd probably give them an 8 on the opposite side this bed has actually been through quite a few changes this year so it started out with some shallots and garlic which was in the strip here and the garlic had a pretty terrible year i don't even have i don't think any footage or photographs of them because when i harvested them they were covered in rust and also white rot and i just wanted to get rid of that as soon as i could and away from my plot so they didn't then move on to other crops. Um, so awful year for the garlic and I harvested them probably, I think it was early June I gave up and I decided to quickly get some parsnips in. And I sowed my parsnips in soil blocks, which I've started to experiment with this year, but couldn't give you a full write up or review just yet because it's still a bit early. And I planted them out and I think I'm gonna have a really good harvest of parsnips and that's followed on from the garlic so i've still made great use of the space i didn't let it go to waste um, the shallots were pretty feeble i don't get on too well with alliums if i'm honest and it's the reason why i don't grow onions because i've never had a good crop so i just don't bother with those anymore we've had a successional crop of beetroot though i've had two sowings in here the second sowing i just threw straight into the ground the seeds in August, early August it was, and we harvested them last month. They've done really well. We've got some chard, that's done really well. Um, and also, well, the turnips speak for themselves by their sheer size. <laughs> They've been a bit, um, a bit of a learning curve, if I'm honest. I didn't realize how quickly you need to harvest them. I'm still acquiring the taste and finding out which recipe kind of suits me best for those. Um, the turnips have outgrown my expectations. Um, the celeriac, well, that hasn't swelled quite as large as I'd have liked it to. I think maybe I've underwatered them, planted them out perhaps a bit late. Um, the plants I actually bought 
uh, from a garden centre on a bit of a whim because um, I realised I hadn't sown any and celeriac takes a long time to grow from seed. So um, the celeriac in terms of size and harvest I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. There's definitely room for improvement there but in terms of the beetroot it's been a 10 out of 10 because I had so many beetroot from this bed and the salad bed this year and they're all a great size multi-sown and direct sown so that was been really well and the parsnips well we've yet to harvest the majority of them but fingers crossed it's a good year i've made use of the space really well by following it with those um from the garlic so yeah fingers crossed we've got lots more parsnips to harvest and they're going to be pretty pest free just want to quickly mention the flower bed behind me that hasn't done too well this year. Um, I think because the hedge behind it is getting so tall it's blocking out quite a lot of the sunlight and um, in previous years I've grown lots of cosmos there and they've all come up and bloomed beautifully and created a nice big meadowy effect but this year I don't know it didn't really perform that well the flowers didn't grow that well um, I think it might be a bit of a light and water problem so hopefully we'll do better next year haven't quite thought about what I'm going to do but we still have some dahlias in the ground that I've mulched so fingers crossed they'll come back next year. In this bed beside me we had quite a lot going on um, in the summer months. On this corner we had the sweet peas that bloomed absolutely beautifully until they fell down. We must build stronger sweet pea frames for next year. I'm actually looking at getting some metal sort of um, teepees um, perhaps but we had a lot of peas and on the tall structure that's still there at the back we had the Lord Leicester peas they grew to about seven foot high the pods had about eight peas in them really nice big peas um, amazing flavor we grew really really well and um, I also, also sowed those into soil blocks and then planted them out as soon as I saw that shoot appearing through the top and they did really really well up that really tall frame um, but I did notice that actually the bottom sort of uh, quarter didn't have any peas on that was all just um, leaf growth so um, there was that um, we also had the rosa corone pea that was probably one of my favorites this year because it was so decorative as well as flavorful and um, the pods were quite short you don't get as many peas but the flower was like this pink and purple and it grew in almost like a crown fashion of blooms and it was really unusual definitely want to grow that one again um, and yeah it's been a great year for peas I think because it's been quite wet in the summer months and not as hot and peas don't like it too hot they don't like their roots to sort of burn in the hot temperatures and they like to be cool and wet roots and they had that so they absolutely you know they grew so so well so it's been a really good year for the peas overall i'd probably give them a nine out of ten on the opposite side this is now my garlic bed for next year but previously it was actually my squash bed and do you remember we had that um, structure in place like a bit of a teepee for my um, squash the um, red curry onion squash the cheeky curry I think it's called and that was amazing um, revolutionary I want to grow squash um, vertically again next year it worked really really well I think as long as your supports are strong enough and your squash don't grow too big um, it's just a great use of space and it was a fantastic little harvest from what is actually quite relatively a small patch of soil we also grew, grew varieties including a buttercup and sweet pie a lot of those are still storing now actually at home um, but yeah it's been a fantastic year for the squash i really concentrated on growing um, smaller varieties this year so there wasn't as much waste and that's worked really really well so i'm definitely going to stick to smaller varieties next year growing them vertically was an absolute winner so in terms of the squash overall i'm going to give them a nine out of ten I doubled the size of my dahlia beds this year so originally it was just that one there behind me but in early springtime I got my hands on more of this Nottingham stone, the local Bulwell stone that's all over Nottingham city and I've extended it into another teardrop shape and we had even more dahlias this year. It was a really really good display and 
I do think there are some things I change next year because there's quite a lot of white and I'd like a bit more pink and purple so I might replace some of the cafe au lait and the white anesta with more pinker varieties and also I didn't quite get the placement right I had a few of the smaller ones the shorter flowers at the back so I need to bring them a bit more forward so they don't get blocked out by the others um, but otherwise you know it's been a great extension made more use of the space which was my main intention this year and now we've got it followed by some wallflowers and some more daffodils that will come up in spring and then the dahlias will go back in for next year it's amazing how much it changes over the seasons and um, yeah it's such a fun project and a nice great big feature for the top of my allotment where it gets full sun and the dahlias always perform really well so in terms of progress and the flowers from this section this year I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Inside the polytunnel it's looking very different now compared to how it did mid-summer but it's been a good year for my chilies and my tomatoes. The tomatoes um, particularly grew well at this end of the polytunnel. The ones that were further back didn't produce so many fruit and that's because it's shaded by this sycamore tree that's growing in the corner that's also hopefully going to get cut back really hard this winter so that I have much more light coming into the polytunnel and the actual cover itself um, does have a few holes now it's approaching its fifth year I think um, so it's done pretty well it was a kind of semi-budget one um, but yeah some holes are appearing that I've taped up but I might need to think about getting it replaced next year if not definitely the year after but in terms of the crops tomatoes grew really well like I said better at this end my favorite variety was Galena that's one of the heritage varieties it's from Serbia it was the yellow one um, flavor was amazing and it was a potato leaf variety so it's quite unusual and that was my favorite this year the Amish paste I didn't harvest quite so many fruit from that this year that one was a bit disappointing um, but on the whole as for the tomatoes I'd probably give their year about a 7 or 8 out of 10 um, in terms of the chilies it varied from crop to crop so the jalapenos grew really really well had a lot bumper harvest from those as well as most of the others but chili varieties such as the ricotto pepper um, that variety didn't grow as many fruits and I think it's a similar picture for other chili growers that I've spoken to I know that Rekka she didn't harvest too many from hers either of that variety I'm not sure if they need a particularly hot summer which we were lacking we didn't have the extended hot spell for quite that long this summer it was a bit all over the place to be honest um, but on the whole the chilies I still harvested loads and I've got lots dried and frozen and I'm so pleased that I actually harvested some of the bohemian goat scotch bonnet style chili this year because I couldn't get them to germinate very well last year and um, they're a nice kind of spice <laughs> they really do have a kick which I think is where the name the goat part comes from because it's got that real punchy kick to it so I'm hopefully going to be growing that one next year as well um, but yeah chilies on the whole I'd give them maybe a 8 out of 10 and it's difficult because 2018 was the year for the tomatoes and the chilies we had that incredible heat wave for about three months and um, just nothing's going to compare to that year now for the warmth loving crops the tomatoes and the chilies it was such a bumper year so I've always got that in the back of the my, my mind that would have been the 10 out of 10 year so yeah not as not as great but on the whole still pretty good so that's how my crops have been this year on the whole it's actually been a pretty good year for everything other than you know the garlic the shallots and the leeks generally the alliums have just been really awful but everything else has actually been all right so in terms of my worst crop of the year it has to be the garlic my best crop of the year is probably my potatoes and the strawberries they were just absolutely amazing and mind-blowing the amount that I grew in terms of my favorite moment on the plot that took place in September and unfortunately 
I can't say too much about that just yet, but hopefully I'll be able to tell you more in springtime. Can't wait to tell you all about it. My favorite new tool for this year is my Niwaki pair of snips. I bought these early on in the season with the intention of using them for cut flowers, you know, stems that aren't too thick or woody for harvesting. They're great because they're quite thin and they can really get, get into tight spots. So they're great for also for harvesting herbs. Um, yeah, it's my new pair of secateurs for this year and I really love them. So yeah, that's 2020 over and out. Almost time to step into 2021. It's been a funny old year, really tough year for many people and for many reasons that, you know, we're not going to dwell on that side of things. Uh, but hopefully 2021 will be a lot more positive. I hope that you've had a good year in terms of your allotment growing. I know it can be, has been a little bit tough um, getting hands on supplies and that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, there's lots to come for next year. I'm really excited to start planning it now and soon I'll be starting off my chilli seeds as well. The weather's been a little bit topsy-turvy. We had that really hot spring, um, quite a wet, mildish summer. It wasn't too hot for very long. But then we had a really long extended autumn that stayed quite mild right through until the end of November. And um, now it's starting to get a little bit colder now as we go into the end of December and we might have snow tonight who knows <laughs> thanks for joining me for my allotment review I'd love to hear about how your year has been on the allotment or in the garden some of your favorite crops and worst crops from your plots also I just want to say a really quick uh, but big thank you for all of your comments of support and encouragement on my last video on my December tour where I mentioned the redundancy thing um, yeah thank you all so much you're all keeping my spirits really high and just thank you so much for commenting and taking part in this um, community that we have online the online gardening community it's just so lovely to hear from all of you all around the world it's crazy <laughs> i just love to hear about what everyone's growing in different parts of the world so thank you very much for joining me this year for all of your comments and messages and just for taking part and supporting my channel for liking and subscribing and sharing the videos and it's why i'm still here producing all these videos for you guys so um, thank you very much for being here this year um, and i'll see you guys real soon thank you very much um, take care of yourselves happy new year um, yeah i'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.